coil with thermagnetic core. The solenoid consists of the coil winding and a thermagnetic core. The core permeability depends on the magnetic field strength. You can see the BH curve here. And the coil is connected to the AC voltage source. Also, there is a resistor and the capacitor in the electric circuit. Our task is to calculate the current. First, I am going to use the AC magnetics model of quick field. AC magnetics model allows you to specify alternating values in an easy manner. In AC magnetics, all values are considered to be a sinusoidal function of time. You can easily measure the results and easily specify the cards. The drawback of this approach is that you cannot calculate the higher order harmonics of the current. And I believe the nonlinear magnetic core may introduce higher order harmonics in the current waveform. So I'm going next I'm going to simulate transient magnetics problem and calculate the current using the transient magnetic analysis. And then I will compare the results of AC magnetics and transient magnetic analysis. Okay, let's start quick field now. In quick field, I create a new problem solenoid. Next, problem type is AC magnetics, frequency is 50 Hz, solenoid features rotational symmetry, so the model class is axisymmetric. Length units are millimeters. The project includes the geometry model file and the material data file. And I will add the electric circuit file to be able to specify external circuit with capacitor and the resistors. Circuit 1. Finish. On the left is the problem pane with the link to the files and on the right is the geometry model editor window. You can draw the geometry model here or you can import the geometry model from the AutoCodex file. The model is simple so I'm going to draw it here from scratch. First I will insert a rectangle with the dimensions 120 by 50 millimeters. Insert then I will insert another rectangle with a height of 40 millimeters. In axisymmetric problems, the axis of rotation is a horizontal one, so 40 millimeters is the diameter. Close, let's zoom to fit. Here you can see the hollow cylindrical steel core. Next, I'm going to insert a circle with a diameter of one millimeter. Insert. Close. This is the cross section of the conductor. Now let's move it to a proper place. Select. Hold the Alt button press to start the drug. Start the drug, now you can release the Alt button. Now let's add more conductors. Right click, duplicate selection, displacement by 1 mm to the right, and I need 119 copies more. OK. And now I'm going to duplicate this. Right click. Duplicate selection, displacement by 2 millimeters, and I need 4 copies more. OK. This way I have constructed the winding. There are 5 layers with 120 conductors in each layer, in total 600 turns. In fact, the magnetic field is distributed not only in the steel parts or in the winding, but also in the air outside. Quick field cannot 
calculate the field distribution in the infinitely large space. So I should limit the simulation domain. In axisymmetric problems, only the upper half of the cross section should present because the bottom half is symmetrical. So what I'm going to do, I switch to insert mode, click and draw the line on the axis of rotation, then change the line type to the half arc and draw the A block boundary. Then switch to insert mode, select and remove the objects below the axis. Hit delete button. Yes. Now let's zoom to fit. The geometry model is ready. Next we should assign labels. With labels we can distinguish geometric objects and we can provide physical properties. Switch to select objects mode. Click the object to select and type in the label name here. This is air. And inside is the air. Now let's zoom in. Switch the zooming mode off. This is steel. And these blocks are conductors. Coil. Okay. That is all for block labels. If you check the summary, there are 600 blocks and all blocks are labeled. Next, we should assign labels to the boundaries. Quickfield automatically assigns proper boundary condition to the axis of the rotation. So I should assign label to this external boundary. And the label will be external. Now let's provide physical properties. Double click the label name in the tree. Relative magnetic permeability of air is 1. Okay. Still, magnetic permeability is a nonlinear function of magnetic field 10. And I have the BH curve data here. I just copy these values and paste it here. You see there are two BH curves. The green one is an original BH curve we have provided data for. And the red one is an adjusted BH curve to be used in AC analysis. We cannot have non-sinusoidal currents or voltages in AC magnetics. So the BH curve is automatically adjusted to provide the same energy value with sinusoidal currents that we would have with non-linear currents. Okay, you can find more information in Quick Filter Help System. Close. Okay. For the coil, which is made of copper, the magnetic permeability is 1 and electrical conductivity is 56 mega siemens per meter. And the conductors are connected in series. Far away from the coil, the magnetic field fades to zero. So at the external boundary, I can specify zero magnetic potential. Okay. Now let's open the electric circuit. In the electric circuit, we should place all conducting materials. In our case, this is the coil. And here I should add the resistor and the capacitor. And I should add the voltage source. Okay. Now let's connect the elements with the wire. Mm, 
this circuit is already. Now let's provide proper values for the elements. The resistor value is 5 milliohms. Okay. And the capacitor capacitance is 5 microfarads. Okay. And the voltage source is 120 volts. This is the sinusoidal voltage source with a magnitude of 120 volts and the frequency of 50 Hz. Okay, the geometry model is ready, the material properties are ready, and the circuit is ready. Before I could start the analysis, I should build the point entanglement mesh in the geometry model. Just press this button and the mesh will be generated. Now save all problem files and solve the problem. The problem has been solved, let's take a look at the results. Here you can see the magnetic field lines and the color map of the current density distribution, or mean square value. Remember we have an alternating voltage source, so this field picture corresponds to some specific moment of time. You can change the moment of time and the field picture should change. In AC problems it is called the phase. You can run the animation to see the cyclic changing of the phase. Now indeed you see that our field is alternating. Okay, you can adjust the field picture and switch on, for example, the color map of the flux density. And I will switch off the field lines. Now let's zoom in. This is the flux density distribution in the core and in the air outside. Again, let's adjust the field picture and switch on the color map of permeability. Field features non-linear magnetic permeability, so the permeability distribution is not uniform in the steel parts. You can get the exact values in any point using the local values tool. Just click any point and you will get the flux density component, field strength component, current density if you click inside conductor, permeability and other field parameters. You can also use the contour tool to calculate integrals or to get the field distribution along some contour line. For example, I will click here on the axis to select this edge. Well, I'd better switch off the color map so you can see what happens. I click the edge and it is selected. Now if I click here and here the entire axis is selected and I can take a look at the XY plot. On the XY plot I will see the flood density distribution along the contour and the exact values you can see in the table. Coordinates, flux density and other field parameters. You can adjust how many rows you can see. 100 rows. You can copy all the data to Excel file, but for now this is not our task. Okay. With the control you can also calculate the integrals. You can draw the contour in any place. For example, I can draw contour here and calculate the magnetic flux. Okay, let's again adjust the field picture and switch on of the field lines. The magnetic flux through this contour. Here it is. Or I can use the contour to select blocks. Contour tool, click this conductor and this one. And I can calculate the total current of both of these conductors 
in one conductor to this value, I can calculate cross section area, joule heat losses, the force acting on this conductor, and other integrals from this list. But there is another way to calculate the current. I can open the circuit results. Here it is. For every element, I can calculate the voltage drop and the current. You see the current lags behind the voltage, so indeed we have the inductive loading and this capacitor is not enough to compensate the active power consumed by the coil. Now what about the coil? The voltage on the coil terminals and the current. And if I compare the values here in the field calculator and in the circuit calculator, you will see that indeed the current value is the same. Let's copy these values. Paste it here. This is current. And this is the voltage drop on the terminals. Now open the QuickField website. Download free tools. And here I need complex power and impedance calculator. I have the values magnitude and phase, so change it. The voltage is 120, phase shift is this value, and the current is this value. And the current phase shift is this value. Minus OK, calculate. Now the impedance of the coil is 14 ohms. And the joule heat losses in the coil is 105 watts. And the active power is 488 volt amperes active. Current locks the voltage by 77 degrees. So it is inductive load. Power factor is 0.2. Now this is the plot of voltage and the current in time. And you see when the voltage hits the minimum value, the current hits the minimum value later, 77 degrees later. This is time. This is the power versus time plot. And this is the vector plot. I can change the phase and see how the vectors are rotating. I have simulated the solenoid using AC magnetic model of Quickfield. Now let's simulate the same problem using transient magnetic analysis. With transient magnetic analysis, I will be able to calculate nonlinear components the current in the coil. I will create new problem. Solenoid 2. I'm going to create a new problem as a copy of existing one. Next. The problem type is transient magnetics. Next. The frequency is 50 Hz, so the time period is 0 0.02 seconds. I'm going to simulate three periods, 0 0.06. And the time step would be 0, 1. 20 steps per one period. Finish. Now you see the transit magnetic problem was created. It features the same geometry model as AC magnetic problem. And the labels are already assigned, but we have to provide properties for these labels. Transient magnetic problem and AC problem 
features different file format for data properties. So for A I specify one relative magnetic permeability. For the steel I specify the BH curve. Here it is. This time there is no red curve, only the green one. And this curve will be used to calculate nonlinear components in the electric current waveform. Okay. For the coil, I specify a relative magnetic permeability of copper, which is 1, electrical conductivity 56 megasemis per meter, and the conductors are connected in series. Okay. For the external boundary, again, I specify zero magnetic potential. And in the circuit, I should correct the voltage source definition. Now it is 120 volts DC voltage. I need a sinusoidal function of time, so I will type in sine tau multiplied by p. In quick field, trigonometric functions operate with degrees, so instead of p, I should type in 180 multiplied by the frequency 50 Hz and multiplied by the time, which is t. Okay, now that's all. Save all problem files and solve the problem. Okay, three pairs of sinusoidal wave were simulated in transient problem, and you can see it took much more time than simulation of AC magnetic problem. That's because Quickfield had to calculate intermediate results. Okay, let's take a look at the results. Again, this is the field picture at some specific moment of time. You can change the moment of time here, and the field picture will change as well. Let's open the circuit results. Now, instead of magnitude and the phase shift, you get the wave. And this wave, as you see, is not sinusoidal one. The voltage is sinusoidal, but the current wave is not. Apart from the higher harmonics, we also have the transient. In fact, we have simulated the switching on of this voltage to this circuit. So initially the current was high and then the transient fades to zero. Only the periodic component remains. I can copy the data the last period of time from 0.04 seconds to 0.06 seconds. Here it is, copy the values and again Let's use the free tools on our website. This time it would be harmonic analysis. I will clear all data and paste new data here. Time and current in the coil. Now let's calculate harmonics. For example, I would like to find first five harmonics in the current waveform. The first harmonic magnitude is 7.7 .7 amperes and this is the phase shift and there is the third harmonic and a teeth harmonic. Now if we compare the results with the AC magnetic analysis you will see that in AC magnetics the current magnitude was 8.3 and the phase shift was minus 77 degrees. And if I run the analysis using only unity harmonic you will see the difference between input data, the blue curve, and the first harmonic, the red curve. So it is up to you if the higher order harmonics are important. You should run transient magnetic analysis. If you can safely ignore the higher order harmonics, you can run fast AC magnetic analysis. If you search for the coil with the paramagnetic core on our website, you will find the example page. Here you can read about problem setup, browse the solution section, take a look at the resulting pictures and download the simulation files. Simulation files may be opened and the results may be viewed using any quick field edition 
including the student edition that you can download from our website for free.